Good morning and welcome to Mornings on the Hill. I'm Rafael Freitas. And I am Isabel Sanchez. Thanks for waking up with us today. Here are this morning's top stories. The change we come into M Street. We will tell you about a proposal the city is considering, which some say could help ease the traffic problems in the area. Winter is right around the corner. We have everything you need to know to survive Syracuse's snowy season. And SU students, faculty and famous alums come together to honor one of their own with a prestigious sports journalism award. Those stories and much more coming up on Mornings on the Hill. Our top story this morning, a change might be coming to Marshall Street. The one-way street is known to generations of SU students. It's home to many favorite restaurants and stores. But it's also a traffic problem, and the area nearby Krause Avenue is often congested with cars backing up turning on to Marshall. Some university community members have signed a petition asking the city to reverse the flow traffic on M Street so cars would empty out onto Krause Avenue instead of University Avenue. Native of Syracuse, um, so... But the head of the Syracuse City, city Public Works Department opposes the idea. Syracuse DPW Commissioner says he will work with city lawmakers to come up with a solution, but he thinks the traffic direction on Marshall should not change. We are off to a cold start this morning, but it's going to be rather mild later today. But the winter weather, as they say on Game of Thrones, <laughs> is definitely coming. Let's take a quick look uh, to our forecast. Yes, there we have it. And looking at the next few days, temperatures will be dropping and snow will be making its way to central New York this weekend. But according to the National Weather Service, it will be earlier next week, while we're away from Thanksgiving break, when most of the snow will fall. We're even talking about the possibility of heavy lake effect, snow lake effect snowfall in the area. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, are you ready for that? I am not. We are definitely not ready for it. But I'm pretty sure that when you woke up this morning, you noticed some frost on your car and on the ground. Yeah, let's see. Well, I'm not ready, but let's, let's do it, right? Yes. <laughs> and that can only mean one thing. Winter in Syracuse is right around the corner. For some, it's a new experience. Like for me, mornings on the hill reporter Brooke Minahan has a story. It's like, sorry. It's like That's right, Isabel and Raphael. Right now it's 32 degrees, but with the wind chill, it feels a lot more like 25, and it's only supposed to get colder outside. Syracuse is the snowiest city in the United States, averaging about 110 inches each winter. We saw a little dusting of white last week, but it's nothing compared to what's to come. So if you're new to the area, how do you survive the cold and snowy conditions? I talked to a few upperclassmen who have already been through a few Syracuse winters and shared their advice. Coat. It sounds dumb, but a senior told me that when I was a freshman and I got this jacket and I got it at Burlington Coat Factory for like 120 bucks, which is more money than I ever thought I would spend on a jacket, but it has kept me warm and it's well worth it. I definitely recommend getting a parka. That's definitely huge. I have a parka and I bring it out when it starts getting pretty cold and see the snow. Um, hoods are always, always a good thing and uh, definitely a, a toque or a hat helps too. Other upperclassmen who recommend getting a good pair of boots and gloves. They also say to dress in layers. And if you have a car on campus, it's good to have winter tires to drive in the snowy conditions and a snow scraper. And like Raphael and Isabel mentioned, there could be snow on the ground when students return from Thanksgiving break. A strong storm system is expected to move through the Great Lakes on Saturday, bringing winds to about 40 miles per hour and a steady rain. And that rain will eventually change into snow Saturday night and into Sunday morning. Reporting live in the studio for Mornings on the Hill, I'm Brooke Meanihan. A big honor for Embassy Sports announcer and SU alum Mike Tirico. The Hurt Auditorium here at Newhouse School was packed yesterday with students, faculty and notable alumni as Tirico received the Marty Glickman Award for Leadership in Sports Journalism. The speakers honoring Tirico included Syracuse Athletic Director John Wildhack and Chief Communication Officer Sue Edson. SU football legend Floyd Little and sports broadcasting icon Marv Albert recorded video testimonials for the event. The 2016 Glickman Award winning Monday Night Football announcer Shen McDonough presented Tirico with the award and said that Tirico coming back to Syracuse University is one of his favorite things to do and he is honored to be recognized by Newhouse. This is a big thrill. Uh, so many great people here 
who have won the award, and Marv Albert, uh, to join Marv and Bob Costas, Dick Stockton, and Beth Moen's uh, friends all is a great honor for me. And who it honors, Marty Glickman, what he stood for, what he has meant over the years. This is a wonderful experience for me. SU students from diverse backgrounds put their thoughts and feelings into poetry and share them with fellow students in a recent poetry open mic night. Four, 14 students performed original pieces for the event that took place in the Maxwell Auditorium this past Monday. The poem, is, the, the, the poem and themes included issues like diver, diversity, pri, privilege, and identity. The presentation was part of a class that focuses on producing honest poems. For some of the students in the class, this is an opportunity to connect with the community. Very much about self-expression, but self-expression that is selfless. It has to be about something that matters to you and at the same time matters to a, a group of people. It has to speak about struggles, it has to speak about solutions, and as much as possible, it has to show your passion about a certain issue which will bring people together, which will inspire people to move forward. The group will have another presentation on campus later this semester. When we come back, students discuss the role of diversity while studying abroad and how it can impact their experience. Students, students discuss the role of diversity while studying abroad and how it can impact their experience. And also how students are rallying together to support Puerto Rico in the cold weather. Multicultural students sometimes face unique challenges while studying abroad. Students got the opportunity in a panel composed of multicultural students who have experience studying abroad in countries like Ghana, Barbados, Chile and China. Students discuss how the ethnicity plays an important role. They discuss how their ethnic background can influence their experience and how to address the challenges that it might bring abroad. They also talk about how embracing the culture, the language, and the food can make the experience more enjoyable. For the organizers event like this present, a unique opportunity to get valuable insight into the, this important academic experience. I think they can like learn about the steps people took to prepare. I think they can think about some of the barriers that um, people face in uh, planning for a study abroad experience. And I think they can also kind of, kind of, he in hearing the benefits um, that students receive from studying abroad, it can kind of maybe make them feel excited about that opportunity. For more information about the study abroad program, visit suabroad.syr.edu. On the other, the Syracuse campus has been hit hard this semester by a mom's outbreak and as a result, many have received vaccination shots. But now it turns out that might not make a difference. Syracuse.com is reporting the maker of the vaccine is facing allegations at fake data, concealing the fact that the drug is far less effective than adversity. SU's break, outbreak began in August. It started with members of the men's and women's lacrosse teams and spread to other students. As of yesterday, there are 41 confirmed cases and 78 suspected cases of mumps. Students on SU campus will continue to help with the relief efforts after storms devastated parts of the Caribbean. More is on the Hill, Katie Benoit. Benoit is live on the studio with more of the latest fundraiser. Some students at SU are looking to help out disaster relief efforts in any way they can even if it means standing outside in the chilly November temperatures. Students stood outside the Carrier Dome Saturday before SU's football game against Wake Forest, asking those attending to donate to those affected by the hurricanes in the Caribbean. Some students participating, like Nick Santana, have family affected by the storms. My grandparents still live in the capital of the Dominican Republic, and they, um, they sent us videos, and I had cousins that sent us videos of extreme flooding, and that was just from Hurricane Irma. Deb Arita is from Puerto Rico, and her family was affected by Hurricane Maria. Yeah, my family is still over there. I was thankfully able to get in communication with them, but like they're still not back on the power grid. Um, they have water, but it's just a hard situation. The fundraiser is just one of many ways people on campus are trying to help. Arita says that the efforts are trying to be as inclusive as possible because of the many areas affected by the natural disasters. The fundraiser bought in a little over $2,000. Thank you, Arita feels that despite the disaster, there is a bright side, seeing people come together. 
when things like this happen, it's really beautiful to see how communities, impacted or not, come together to help people. And so sometimes when we're flooded by social media, that's just showing us how terrible the world is. We forget that there's a lot of good people in the world. An open mic night will be held tomorrow at Hendricks Chapel at 6.30 p.m. called Worlds of Resilience for the Caribbean. The event will focus on rebuilding the communities. Live in the studio, I'm Katie Benoit for Mornings on the Hill. Thanks, Katie. Central New Yorker Peyton Sefik is one of the most renowned athletes in the nations for his sports, but it's one that most people don't know much about. Mornings on the Hill contributor Elisa Candiotti has his story. Peyton Sefik makes no qualms about it. He's as competitive as it gets. My friends don't like playing with me because I get so salty. The 26-year-old from Syracuse spends much of his time playing video games just like many others, despite being born with arthrogryposis, a physical disability that affects joints in his arms and legs. I love the aspect of, you know, playing against someone. It's like hardwired into my mind. That drive has led Payton to become one of the top wheelchair power soccer players in the United States. One, two, three, United! It's been instrumental in my life just to, you know, show me that I, I don't really have limits when it comes to what I want to do, you know. Peyton proved that to be true while competing in the 2017 Power Soccer World Cup in Florida. In a substitution for the United States, Peyton Sefik. Training began back in 2015 for the 12-member team. Peyton says the commitment was one worthwhile. I've had a few months since the World Cup and I still think about it every day and I don't see that you know, fading away anytime soon. For Peyton, moving forward and upward are the biggest goals he has in mind. That's why he drives to the Fitness Inclusion Network in Syracuse each week to organize ways for other people with disabilities to play sports. Just because they seem to be at a disadvantage doesn't necessarily mean they are at one. The biggest thing to think about is the individual that's you know at the forefront. Whatever makes us happy is what we are pulled towards. So. That doesn't change if you have a disability, invisible or not. Go, 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 yeah! If you see me and I'm, you know, tooling around in my chair, it's Peyton. It's not a, a guy in a wheelchair. Alyssa Candiotti, Mornings on the Hill. The SU basketball season is underway. Frank DeLuca is live in the studio with her Orange Sports Update. Frank? Good morning, everyone. I'm Frank DeLuca with your Orange Sports Update. The Orange men's basketball team took on the Iona Gales in the Dome last night. We'll take you to a scoreless game. Some ball movement finds Pascal Chukwu, who hammers it down, making his presence felt. Interesting matchup here by Iona. It's man. Chukwu again with an emphatic slam. Chukwu had five points in the contest, but the real story here was Tyus Battle. Drove down the hoop and the harm. He's fired up, and the Orange would need all 28 of his points in a close one. Later on, it's Battle driving in with a step-back jumper and drills it to extend the lead to 10. Ty's Battle had a career-high 28 points in the contest. And at the end of the game, a long inbound versus an Iona full-court press finds who else but Tyus Battle rushing down the court, slams it down, seals the deal, and Syracuse takes this one 71 to 62. The two football teams at the Dome put up similar numbers. The Orange lost to Wake Forest 64 to 43 in a game where defense appeared to be optional. The teams combined for 1,350 total yards. Syracuse must win the last two games of the season to be bowl eligible. And Coach Dino Baber senses the urgency as they go to Louisville this weekend. We're up on the cliff now. There's no more room for error. We need to go down there and uh, to our next opponent who uh, won today. And they've got fabulous players and it's at their place. And we've got to find a way to get a win on the road. That's all for your Orange Sports Update. Back to you, Isabel and Raphael. It's Native Heritage Month and indigenous people across the nation are celebrating the cultures, traditions and stories of Native people. Our Colleen Calendar is live in the studio with an SEO student who is celebrating. Colleen? Thanks, Isabel and Raphael. I'm here with Alyssa Franklin, a member of the group Indigenous Students at Syracuse. Thanks, Alyssa, for being here. So what exactly is the group Indigenous Students at Syracuse and what do you do not only during the month of November but all year round? 
So I think it's hard for everyone when they're coming from home, being on their own for the first time, and they don't really know where they belong, but here at Indigenous Sy Students at Syracuse, we give Native students an opportunity to feel like they still have a home. And during Native Heritage Month, we just celebrate different events to celebrate our identity and who we are. Great, and today kicks off Rock Your Mocks nationally, where people can wear their moccasins. And what exactly does this campaign aim to do? It's, it's a national event and also being celebrated here on campus. So it started in New Mexico with um, a girl named Jessica. And it started when she was coming home from some ceremonies and she was wearing her mocks. And she didn't want to take them off because they were so comfortable. And she decided that she would make an event on Facebook and get people to join to commemorate November 15th as National Rock Your Mocks Day. And now it's just a symbol to show our unity. Great. And how involved is your campus group with the Onondaga Nation that's right off Syracuse University's campus? So we have students from the Onondaga Nation, but we don't like do too much with the nation. We are on traditional Onondaga territory, so that's really important to remember and to respect like what they've done to keep the land healthy and create this environment for the school. And um, sometimes we'll go down there for different events like the wooden lacrosse tournament. And um, like last year we helped out with the no dapple. That's pretty much all we do with them. <laughs> and how can, can people of the non-native community get involved with the events of Native Heritage Month? this week all throughout the month and even other events you hold throughout the year? So even if you don't have moccasins or if you do, you can wear those to support or um, wear a turquoise colored ribbon just to show your support for who we are. And um, you can, you're welcome to come to any of our events. Great, Alyssa, thank you so much for being here with us. Isabel and Raphael, back to you. Thanks, Colleen. There's still more to come here, Mornings on the Hill. When you come back, our John Singh will join us to show us how SU had a special honor for members of the military. Recent Veteran Day events here on campus honor both those who have served and those who currently ser are serving in the Army of the United States. Our very own Jonathan Singh was able to catch up with a few veterans outside of the Careers Dome before Saturday's football kickoff. This past Saturday, Q's football paid respect to veterans as they dedicated their game against Wake Forest to those who have served and are currently serving. The marching band made their way around the quad as fans entered the Carrier Dome. I was able to catch up with a few of the bravest as they were outside campus's west side honoring each other. For them, this day symbolizes more than just a holiday. And Veterans Day means a lot to me because I am continuing my family's legacy. I'd like to give a shout out to my grandfather, Second, second Lieutenant uh, Edwin J. Bauer in the Army Air Corps. And a happy Veterans Day to all my friends that are deployed right now. Lorraine Bauer is a cadet in the Army ROTC. She is also a graduate student here at Syracuse University. Bauer was accompanied by a few of her colleagues who also shared their words on this prestigious day. Uh, for me, it means honoring my grandfathers who both fought in World War II and that whole generation, the greatest generation of the World War II era. It's just, it's just, just a time to honor our veterans, uh, thank you for their service, and remind them uh, <clears throat> uh, how grateful the nation is for them. A former Army combat medic says she enjoys the recognition that this day brings to those who have served. It means a lot to me actually. It's just that one day where it's like we give so much and it's that one day that we actually get recognized for it. So it's nice to, you know, recognize those who came before us and led the way and now taking that time to reflect on what we've given up as well. And of course, we cannot forget the encouraging words from the United States Air Force. The Veterans Day it, to me just uh, helps me remember who came who came uh, before me uh, and us uh, serving in the military uh, not only is it to uh, 
honor those who have served and sacrificed, but those who will also uh, decide to serve and sacrifice in the future. Our thanks goes out to all of those who have sacrificed themselves on the line of duty. Despite the losses past weekend to Wake Forest, we are all winners thanks to the brave men and women who defend our nation. Jonathan Singh, Mornings on the Hill. Many students will be headed home or somewhere else off campus for Thanksgiving break. But let's take a look at the events coming up this weekend here on the Hill. Tomorrow, Maryland Eastern Shore will come to the Carrier Dome to play the Orange women's basketball team at 7 p.m. On Friday, women's volleyball will host Wake Forest on Friday night at 7 p.m. in the women's building. And on Saturday, women's ice hockey will play RIT at 3 p.m. at the Kennedy Ice Pavilion. And later, the Orange men's basketball team will take on Texas Southern at 7 p.m. in the Carrier Dome. And on Sunday, the volleyball team will be back at it again in the women's building against Duke at 1 p.m. Thanks so much, Colleen. Well, we know traveling during the Thanksgiving holiday can be hectic and stressful. Stressful. That will certainly be the case this year. This, it is expected a record 28.5 million holiday travelers will be flying this week. And of course, many more will be driving long distances. Wow, that sounds crazy, huh? Do you celebrate Thanksgiving in Brazil? We don't, but and, uh, I wish I, I was traveling there, but no time. No time, absolutely. And I'm from Venezuela, so Thanksgiving is not a tradition there either, but I'm very excited to celebrate it this year here with all my friends and my family in Syracuse with the very cold weather. So I think it's going to be very, very traditional Thanksgiving. Lots of turkey and stuffing. I'm very excited and looking we're, forward for it. We're open to invitations. If you guys want to invite us to eat turkey, we'll be glad to join, right? Of course. And that's all the time we have. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos hoy en Mornings on the Hills. Yo soy Isabel Sanchez. And I'm Rafael Freitas. Muito obrigado por estar com a gente essa semana. We'll see you in two weeks after Thanksgiving. Bye.